reason. You should be able to say whatever you want, right? Because one lady came up to me one night, she goes, oh, I'm so upset you used the word recon. I, you know what? I understand that. You should never call a special needs person retarded. That's insensitive and wrong. But again, looking back at my life, you know, I remember one time I locked myself out of the house. You know, and I didn't call my buddy up going, hey man, I did something really special needs. <laughs> because, you know, he'd say, what are you, a retard? <laughs> Because we do weird things here in America. Last weekend, I'm working in Upper Michigan, right? It's 26 degrees out. There's two inches of snow on the ground. 26 mile per hour wind, snow still blowing, and it shows sold out, right? But I am by head park way the hell away, but I walk by like 10 empty parking spots. You know what they were? They're all handicapped spots. Yeah, well, come on, America. We ought to have some kind of rule that after 9 o'clock at night and there's crappy weather, anybody can use those spots. <laughs> Trust me, if Grandma's hover round doesn't have snow tires on, she ain't going out. <laughs> Handicapped people are calling each other, hey, Bobby, it's snowing out. Kind of like the night we had the accident. You want to go out? <laughs> Saying we do stupid things in America. Lady, they give me an example. I was in Vegas, they have these oxygen bars. You know what I'm talking about? You go in there, you pay 20 bucks, and they have a hose coming out of the wall, and you put this mask on to get oxygen. 20 bucks. But you don't know what's behind the wall. For all I know, it's like six toothless carny workers back there with a tire button going. <laughs> Pissed me off the high gas price going through Pennsylvania, drive by an Amish person sitting on his wagon with that, you know, that Cheshire cat grin on his face. <laughs> Who's the dumbass now? <laughs> <laughs> Mister, I drive a Mustang. <laughs> Dude, man, there's all kinds of dumb laws. Down in Florida, they outlawed. I live down there. They outlawed the thong babies. No string bikini. Yeah, it's against the law to wear that in public. But yeah, but we didn't have to all all that. All we had to do was put a weight restriction on it. <laughs> you have the blow hole. Take that off. <laughs> no, not here. Put it back on. <laughs> and here's the other thing. Every bottle of beer, can of beer sold in America has a, has a warning on it. Government warning. It's a federal law. Federal law. Are we that dumb in America? You think anybody in America is drinking tonight out of a can of beer going, Oh, this stuff could hurt you. Thank God they had a warning label on there. That could have been messed up. You know, it says the government warning consumption of alcohol beverages impairs your ability to drive a car. I know some of you up here going, I dropped a truck. I'm okay. <laughs> People didn't laugh. You're the reasons why we have these warnings. <laughs> convenience store yesterday, right? And uh, a Coke, a 16 ounce Coke was 89 cents. A 16 ounce bottle of Dasani water was $1.29. <laughs> Does that not register with you? There are 17 ingredients in Coke. You know how many ingredients are in water? One, freaking water. <laughs> There's a patent on Coke. You can't patent water. You know what? Because it's freaking water. <laughs> they got us, man. They got us. You know, Coke, Coke is a want, water's a need. That's why you can go into a 7-Eleven and you can get like 64 ounces of Slurpee for 27 cents. Oh, we took the Slurpee away for free. It's fine. It gets them in the store. What about water? They need it. Fuck them. <laughs> How the country works. Go ahead and watch a late night commercial tonight. You'll see some lawyer come on TV about 2 in the morning. Have you or a loved one been injured in an auto accident? If so, call the law of the butt fucking you. <laughs> this is supposed to be America's smartest and brightest. They went to college long, right? And they're doing ambulance chasing commercials. Are you kidding me? If I was a lawyer, I'd be smart about it. I wouldn't advertise on TV. I'd advertise on an airbag. Somebody got a car accident and injured, <laughs> call me. <laughs> What about the banks 
the country, the backbone of America, the banks. America was grown up on, you know. They made a record $60 billion profit two years in a row after we gave them a trillion dollar bailout. That was their thank you to us to raise every damn service charge fee just to screw us as hard as they could. You know, I'm talking about, right? You bounce a check, 32 bucks, ATM, you got to charge for that. I'm afraid you're going to get a loan, to be honest. You know, it's 30, up to 30% on credit cards. Oh, Mr. Adams, what'd you come in for? Well, I, 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 I came in to get a loan. I grab that jar of Vaseline, follow me. <laughs> Big jar, what do I need this for? Bend over here, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> Seems a little tight. You sure about what you must before? <laughs> Look at you. That's how they treat us, get even with the banks. Next time you go to the bank, go through a drive through Fart in that tube, send that back in there. <laughs> Call button, hey, I got something for your CEO. <laughs> I mean, here's all you need to know about the corporations in our country, right? They spent $700 million last year for the naming rights to sports stadiums. Do you care what the name of a football stadium's called, sir? No, exactly. You care about your team, right? You don't care if it's called a Twinkie Dome or some shit. And the, and the nerve of these guys, the ego on them, to think they weren't impressed by that, because it's a tax write off. Hey, you know what impressed me? How about if we gave all that money to the war effort? That way all our soldiers have the right equipment, and they'd come home safely, and you'd still have your tax write off. Wouldn't that be better, huh? Yeah? yeah. Woo! Matter of fact, you give enough money, we'll let you name the damn war. <laughs> so the Iraqi war could be like the Nike Open. <laughs> the Little Caesars Afghan Challenge. <laughs> You can have live commercials. Pay the soldiers that money. They deserve it. As some guy hop on an M1 tank, I've been blowing hell out of Afghan villages all day. I get hungry. So I stopped and got Little Caesar's Pizza. <laughs> I have a camera crew down by the detention center. Come on in, boys. We just caught some insurgents. You know what? They have some important information. We need that information right away. So, we don't hook the nipples up to any car battery. We use AC Delta. in America. All the way Clear! Oh! Oh! I watch that commercial all day! <laughs> Nobody's got a plan for the war. Been there 11 years. I got a plan. I think I'll take all the people with three or four DUIs all across America, right? Send their ass over there. Have an open bar all day long. Come midnight, give the keys to Humvee. <laughs> you know those lucky drunken bash me swerving, missing the landmines, picking off insurgents left and right? Next day, more damn towels hanging off that car than a clothesline. <laughs> Six weeks of that to be calling us up. Please take care of suicide truckers from my land. <laughs> Suicide armory? <laughs> oh, I suck, wouldn't it? I'm depressed. I want to kill myself. Great! How about next Tuesday? <laughs> Say, can you drive a stick? <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the name radical Islamic extremists. Right? I mean, they preach violence, they have to pray five times a day, face a certain direction at a certain time, use a prayer rug. Holidays, certain mosques, certain prayer. Women! Women are not allowed in religion whatsoever. Last time I did something that many rules, eighth grade, called the Hokey Pokey. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't have their own song by now. You put your turban on, you put your prayer rock down, you face to the east and you throw your prayers around. You do your holy holy and you bow to the ground. That's what it's all about. Islamic extremist out here tonight, remember, what would Jesus do? He <laughs> <laughs> was Jewish, you pinhead! <laughs> give it up to the armed force for doing the best they can. <laughs> and that goes for our ladies fighting over there, too. We got women fighting over there. Yeah, they're not allowed to fight on the front line, but I'll tell you what, I think American women would kick some ass. I'd put them again, up against any country. Yeah, and, you, and plus, I was reading that women get together, they tend to cycle at the exact same time. Like, we've got four women over here, 
cramping. You get, some of the guys are cramping up right now, right? <laughs> but can you imagine you have a battalion of women sitting in a sweaty foxhole, a thousand women? Wouldn't take much to piss them off, would it? <laughs> the insurgents just said you had fat asses. <laughs> You didn't have to give them women guns. <laughs> Charging over the hill with a pair of nail clippers and a blow dryer. <laughs> back wearing a necklace made out of testicles. <laughs> <laughs> Want to play? <laughs> yeah, I'm in charge of the army. If I'm in charge of that, I'd like to be in charge of that battalion. Matter of fact, I wouldn't make our American women wear camouflage either. I'd make them wear bikinis. <laughs> well, here's why. I take advantage of men being pigs all over the world. Can't tell me a bunch of Afghan soldiers. See a bunch of hot U.S. women in bikinis come charging out of the foxhole. Shoot! They be laying down the road going, "Holy moly, we're all going to get laid!" Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know about getting laid, Momar, but you're definitely going to be fucked. <laughs> Say America's in debt. Gonna take 20 years to pay off all the debt we have. You heard that? Yeah. Yeah, gonna fall on the shoulders of the kids that are new millennials. These are kids that are 10 and 12 right now. Have you met them? We're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I got nephews that age, man. I know I'm talking. I was over at their house, they're playing baseball in the backyard, and 12 year old yelled at 10 year old, hey, you're throwing the ball like a girl. Just don't say that. That insinuates to something like a woman is wrong. Which is incorrect for him to say, right, ladies? Yeah, because little kids don't realize women have a stronger threshold of pain than men, don't they? <laughs> right? So you think women are going through labor, other women are in the room go, Come on, you're breathing like a man! Suck it up, you wussy! <laughs> <laughs> like I said, my little 12 year old, he's like the most arrogant little pissing. So he comes up to me, Hey man, we're like the greatest generation ever. Really, why do you say that? We got all the cool stuff you guys never had. Really, what do you guys got? We got Facebook, man. We got Facebook. Well, that's where you write on the wall. We, we had that going on. No, you didn't. Yeah, we did. No, you didn't. Yeah, we did. It's called the bathroom stall. <laughs> you wrote stuff like Mary Johnson puts out on the first day. <laughs> Next day, Mary Johnson has 30 new friends. <laughs> To make us more productive and better at sport. We have five hour, we have monster, we have Red Bull, how about that? Yeah, well, we had that going on. No, you didn't. Yeah, we did. No, you did. Yeah, we did. It came in a powder form. It's called cocaine, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have the internet, we, we got Google, we get answers just like that. That's how quick we get our information just like that. Yeah, well, we had that going on. What? No, you didn't. Yeah, we did. No, you did. Yeah, we did. It's called the Magic Eight Ball. <laughs> Ask a question, shake it, turn it over. <laughs> right? They like the answer, do it again. Well, we have all we have all the greatest sports, man. We have, we have John Madden football, we have, we have NBA basketball, we have Tiger Woods golf. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we had that going on. No, you didn't. Yeah, we did. No, you did. Yeah, we did. We played it outside. It was called fresh air, fat fuck. <laughs> Well, well, we, we we had our own, own style of dress, man. We, 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 we dressed in a unique way that you guys never had. What? I see the way you're dressed. Your hat's on sideways, your pants so baggy, your underwear is showing, your shoes run high. We had that going on. No, you didn't. Yeah, we did. No, you didn't. Yeah, we did. Came to school in a short bus. They're called retards. <laughs> Well, we have our own unique music, man. We're the first ones to come with the, the dirty lyrics, you know, freedom of speech. I mean, you're not the first ones. We had that for a while. No, you didn't. Yeah, we did. How about this little ditty? Nine Inch Nails, early 90s. I wanna do you like an animal. <laughs> yeah, what a great song to slow dance to. <laughs> Remember when that came out, I was embarrassed. I was thinking to myself, you think John Lennon and Paul McCartney, two of the greatest songwriters of all time? You think they hang out in Liverpool years ago? John walks to the apartment. Hey, Paul, come up with some lyrics for a song. What's that, John? I want to do you like an animal. 
It's a wee bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's the truth. <laughs> I have an idea, John. What do you say we tone it down and sing, I want to hold your hand? 